using the recently updated um software called Protobot Beta, and it's a great software for beginners and for um people who are more experienced as well. It is so great. Before this, I used to design CAD models on on shape. On shape was great, but it was very laggy and it was on a Chrome browser, so it was not download. I didn't have it downloaded. It was on a browser, so it went really slow. In addition, it like sucked. You know, it just it was very bad because it was a very it was a very tedious task to work with on shape compared to Protobot Beta. Protobot Beta is much better because you can easily add pieces, and here's the whole catalog of Vex pieces that you would really need. And I feel like as if on shape they didn't have as much pieces. It probably did, but the problem with Onshape was that you had to download like a lot of document and files to get all of them sorted. So these are all sorted perfectly for you. But on Onshape, you had to download a lot of random files and stuff. And all those files that you downloaded would eventually like get all mixed up. And I would have like 30 files just for like three VEX pieces that I actually needed. So that's why I started it. That's why I discovered this on the VEX forum. Thankfully, because this is a much better, much better CAD software. So let's begin with the explanation. So first thing I did here is the base, of course. Base is always the foundation, I guess. I don't know. I probably am doing that wrong. But hopefully, I get critiqued on my design because I honestly would love to have some criticism before I go back to school because. I'm going to be taking um, parts home for the summer and I want to get a list of parts that I'm going to need by Monday. Today is Friday. So I want to spend the next two days working on a new design. This is just a draft. So then when I go back to school eventually and the last week, last weeks of school, I can eventually start gathering up the parts that I'm going to need for this robot build. So here's the standard um, four motor drive. Um, I used to think a three to one gear ratio because this is the eighty four tooth, and then this is a sixty four tooth gear. I was gonna use a one to one gear ratio, but and then I didn't decide to do that. I decided to just um just to do a, a faster gear ratio, and I hope that it doesn't backfire because um previous teammates that I've had switched to a higher gear ratio for higher speeds, and their robot ended up burning out like in the first ten seconds of them using it. So hopefully that doesn't happen to us. I'm hoping on the reliability of this. If not, I'll have to eventually have to switch it back to a one to one because one to ones are the most reliable. But I saw a lot of benefits with having a faster gear ratio on your robot while competing um in tipping point. In tipping point, there was a lot of robots that had a higher gear ratio than a one to one, and that's why I'm gonna probably use yeah a one to one. I mean a three to one gear ratio because it just seems more it just seems to give you an advantage, to be honest. It's just a cheat code. Also on your side, you can see here, pretty simple stuff right here for the get for the gear base. Pretty simple stuff. It's not the best, and I know it's not the best. It's pretty simple, and there's gonna be a little bit of wiggle room here because there is like no um nothing supporting the wheels. So the wheel's gonna have a little bit of friction on it. It's gonna be like a little bit messed up. So now let's get into the intake. I apologize, I'm, I'm very horrible at designing intakes. So I um I did get some inspiration from the Vex forum that I'm gonna link down below where somebody designed this. Um I got inspired by the design of the intake. And um I wanna give him credit for for inspiring me to do a similar intake to them. So it's a pretty standard intake. I'm not really good at designing intakes at all. So yeah, like I've only ever designed like one intake and it, it wasn't really that good. So hopefully that this intake will actually be able to be better because I am not good at designing intakes. Like that is one of my, my worst attributes. Like I am very poor at designing my intakes. In previous robot competitions such as Turning Point, I believe, I had a very bad intake and it didn't work out at the end. So here it is. Here is the Vex intake for this year's competition. So this part is going to be held by rubber bands. So then the this gets inserted into the, the rubber bands. And then this one's going to have traction. I forgot what they call it. They're just going to have flaps. 
so it doesn't get picked up and the thing that i that i that i don't like about this robot is that i had to improvise because like the angle of the intake is very high i mean it's very low compared to like other robots other robots have like an intake design in which their angle is not 45 this is a 45 degree angle right here but other robots have like a 70 or 80 nearly 90 degree angle so their robot pretty much intakes the disc up here and then they have like a lower intake up down here or they could have like an intake that goes right here and then it's kind of reversed like it's like a th full 360 so this the 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 flywheel is pointing out towards the left direction instead of going right so a pro of this is that like you can easily just suck up a disc and shoot it out it doesn't have to be loaded in into like a loader and another problem that we have is that we don't have pneumatics, so we I, I couldn't make a design in which like I could just have a piston collect the disc and I would press a button and then it would push it out and have the flywheel constantly running because I'm gonna have to just have it like this. It's just gonna go here. It's gonna go in and shoot out and shoot out. It's gonna be like that. And I think it's only gonna be able to work. I feel like the intake and the flywheel are only gonna be able to work during like our, a period of time in which we like insert discs into our robot because like on the seven match preloads that you start off with the match yeah that's going to be like the only time i'm only ever going to be ever to i'm only going to be ever to able to you know just shoot this uh messed up right there um it's hard to explain so the disc is going to go in through here and just shoot out this is going to be one whole process and I, don't, I think it's going to only be able to hold, at the most, we're going to be able to hold two discs at a, at a time. I, I think other robots are just going to be able to hold, like, way more. Like, they're going to be, they're going to stack discs, and then they're going to have a little piston or a little mechanism to, like, push the disc into the flywheel. And, but for us, for now, this design just requires a disc to flow up and have the flywheel running. And then after that, it just gets shot out, shot out. So, that is the flywheel design. I gotta, I gotta give credit to the design to the designer of this that helped me get inspiration for my design. So there's like a lot of flaws here. I know this is a like this is like a SketchUp, but like this is like a draft of my design. And here we can go into the flywheel. Now I've created flywheels in the past before and they never really worked out very well because they didn't have any power to them and it was like super slow. It was fast. It was extremely fast. Like it was 84 shoot gear here. It was extremely fast, but they just didn't shoot out really well. So that's why hopefully this design can actually do very good. I barely was able to manage to angle it correctly. I was able to mount it after a very long and tedious process. And here you go. This the disc is gonna go. And hopefully on this video that I'm demonstrating, you guys can give me criticism and how I could improve my design for the future competition when I eventually get back. Because I really need feedback on my design because I don't think it's good at all because I feel like it can, it can have some improvements, something that can like make it better. But I don't really know what that is right now. So that's why I'm asking for you guys to criticize and give feedback to my design because I feel like it can be much better. It can be, it can easily be much better if I just put in a little bit more um, thinking into what I'm truly going to be able to create. And as you can see, there's like a whole mess of like mounting, mounting state of civilization. Like you can see here, here's a C channel. Here's another C channel connected to this C channel, connected to this L channel, connected to the C channel off the flywheel. And then that one is connected to this other one over here. And it's just a whole bunch of mess. It's just a giant mess of C channels everywhere. And on this side of the C channel, another C channel, and then a oh, 25 volt C channel, and right here, yeah. I also forgot to mention that there's like a little bit of a flaw here, like a little mistake that I made. So yeah, look, look right here. As you can see, um, yeah, I messed up very badly here. I'm actually like move this part over here. Look at this. Look at this. So the there's a two there's two intakes, the rubber band intake and the flaps intake. Flap intake is going to be powered by this little tiny sprocket connected to this sprocket. So let's go into the 2D viewer. 
So as you can tell, look, this sprocket connects to this sprocket, and it's going to be a faster, fast ratio. This one's going to be a one to one. It's going to be like a three to one because this one's bigger than this one. The, uh, the input gear is bigger than the output gear. That's why it's going to be a very fast gear ratio compared to like something let's like, say like this one to one. But well, you can see the metal piece right here is covering up the flap. I mean, covering up the sprocket because I wanted to have it like this. The rubber band didn't take to go. So I'm gonna suck it up and shoot it out. This is gonna be one continuous motion. We're gonna have to put the disc here and boom, 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 boom. And we're gonna have to have the five will power probably power on the whole time. Oh, and then here is gonna be the motor and the wheel to just spin the little thing. I was thinking about connecting it to the motor here for motor sharing, but isn't it a little bit too complicated to do that? Or connect it to this one right here. Connect it to this one, yeah, right here. Connect this sprocket to a sprocket here. And then, so that would be able to share a little motor right there. So this motor and component would power three mechanisms that would allow me to then create other mechanisms, like a scissor lift that would just expand. And as you guys might have noticed that if you click on my next forum page, um, I actually came up with an idea of, I don't, I don't think he came up with it, but my, my, my friend came up with an idea and he told me to post it onto the forum of a spring, I mean, a string loaded mechanism that would just release string. Like it would just be like a little gearbox right here. And then they would just drive forward and release string. So. I don't think we're gonna do that, but if we were to ever do that, we would ha uh, we would have a lot of room here. The batteries and the brain are just there, taking up space because it's battery. But we would have a lot of space here. And if I ever decided to do a motor sharing mechanism, I would only be using one, two, three, four, five, six. That would allow me to have two motors here for a potentially six motor drive. That's what I that's what I really want to do. Six motor drive, you know. That would be a great design to do because the six motor drive will allow us to have more power in our motor and our whole base would just be more powerful. So a six motor drive is definitely in the works. So we got a flywheel motor here and an intake motor that practically powers everything. That's a hope for the future. And then maybe a six motor drive or the string mechanism. If not, I'll just make a ginormous little scissor lift in the middle of it. Like one of those death traps. And yeah. That's pretty much my robot design. Hopefully you guys can help me out here in improving my design. I gave you feedback and criticism on what I should do better because I really need it at this point. I don't, I can see a lot of flaws, but I just need you guys to point them out because, you know, it's hard, it's hard for a person to point out their own flaws. You know? I guess, I guess I can see that, but overall, I'm somewhat happy with the design came that the design that came out. Theoretically, it looks like it works, but I don't think it will work that well. I feel like everything everything in the base and, and the and the intake is gonna be well made, but like the intake working together with the flywheel. And the whole mounting of the flywheel is a very complicated process, which I think is just gonna make everything fall apart at the end of the day. Hopefully we can we can resolve the problems and this robot build didn't go to waste. So I need the I need to be able to get the parts by this week or next week so I can start building it or just have it. Alright, goodbye. I'm trying to sleep right now. So I'll go to sleep.